Good evening everyone, I hope you're doing good. Today, uh, I know I, it has been a long time since I posted some videos uh, due to studies and a lot of work. Uh, today, I've decided to um, bring up the Enlightenment and Industrial Revolution together in one uh, video or in one lecture. Um, I will start with the Enlightenment because Enlightenment came before Industrial Revolution, which was also the cause of uh, Industrial Revolution. So, Enlightenment is the age uh, of reason. It is also known under the name um, of the age of reason or the age of logic. People started to use logic rather than being dogmatic. Being dogmatic is to believe in things without question, questioning uh, them. It was an intellectual, philosophical movement that dominated the world of ideas in Europe. So the Europeans were brought to light after a long struggle with um, the Dark Ages. So uh, basically it was it started from the late 17th century to the end of the 18th century in England it all started in 1694 which was characterized by the reestablishment of the bank in England uh, which permitted this country or England to be the first at the top it gave the English people a certain uh, feeling of stability or safety and also we have some important intellectuals or philosophers uh, in England which played a major role in uh, this uh, movement. Philosophers like Kent uh, or uh, John Locke or even um, Thomas Hobbes showed that rationality or showed uh, rationality in general. Uh, rationality is like logic in order to aware people about what happened during the Middle Ages. And thanks to their enlightened ideas, uh, they could change everything in the British society. People uh, knew about the danger of being dogmatic, the danger of religion, to be uh, too religious, etc. So, like I said, these English intellectual intellectuals uh, played a major role in the Enlightenment. John Locke, he... Um, for example, we have John Locke, uh, he influenced many other thinkers of enlightenment. He is considered also as the father of liberalism. And liberalism, we are going to see uh, later uh, the meaning of uh, liberalism with um, the British uh, Empire because this term thrived later on. Another English intellectual uh, who is Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton is known for the universal uh, gravitation and Newton's law of motion. Another one, Erasmus Darwin, the grandfather of Charles Darwin, whose famous work is Zoonomia. He was also a poet, an architect, and a historian. We have Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine is very important, especially in the American civilization. He wrote a very important pamphlet at that time during the um, American uh, Revolution against, uh, against the, the British uh, government. Uh, his pamphlet praised patriotism during the American Revolution, like I said. Uh, this pamphlet basically it was used to roast King of England and to praise patriotism to uh, tell people that you need to fight for your country uh, we shouldn't be governed by a despotic king who is George III at that time he was also called the Mad King because George III lost the 13 colonies so Thomas Paine was um, influenced by the ideas of John Locke and um, the encyclopedia uh, of the, the second period of uh, enlightenment. Now we shall move to enlightenment ideas. It was the age, um, I don't know, it's, it's like it was the age of criticism and if you have criticism you have many ideas. Uh, this person criticized this ID and that person criticized another ID. We have two different IDs, two distinct IDs. This is what we call diversity of IDs, which lead to innovation um, Create, uh, creating new things, inventing new things which will benefit the society in general. But still, uh, in everything we have dark chapters such as Galilei, Galileo Galilei who said that Earth is not flat. He stated that Earth is not flat and he was killed uh, unfortunately. In the Middle Ages we had despotism and to be despotic or being despotic is to rule autocratically, to rule as you like or in other words to be a tyrant. 
in the Enlightenment era, um, we had enlightened uh, despotism. The kings, the those who govern countries, nations, they started to think what is beneficial for uh, the people and society in general. We have also utilitarianism. Utilitarianism is considering the interest of all beings equally. It's like when you uh, are about to create something, to invent something, you do not invent it only for the kings or only for those who, um, those who, for example, uh, who have uh, a specific uh, social rank, but all beings, ordinary people, are all going to benefit from this uh, thing which is about to be uh, invented. And also, one important thing uh, is religion. Religion during the Enlightenment uh, was put aside because people knew, they were aware by uh, John Locke, Kant, or um, uh, John or Thomas Hobbes, they, they showed rationality. People are aware about the danger of religion. So people searched for happiness instead uh, working for their uh, afterlife. And we had absence of dogmatism. Uh, people started to question everything before they believe in them and uh, it changed a lot in the British society. They wanted to create a perfect society in terms of economic or agriculture or uh, social life uh, in general. Now the Enlightenment has three uh, periods. The first one is the early Enlightenment from 1685 until 1730. It or its origins um, are from John Locke and Isaac Newton. John Locke, uh, he like he uh, criticized or he showed a new form of government. Uh, it is representatives, by the way, and he also showed rationality, like I said, and he also introduced the fact that human beings are mutant, mutable. They change uh, in order to have a better understanding of human beings in general. And both of them defended one point of view, which is one duty, property, life, and liberty. These things were taken in a deep consideration. People worked according to uh, these principles. The second and the second uh, period, which is the High Enlightenment, from 1730 until 1780, they uh, spread the ideas of enlightenment to the world, to the entire world, thanks to the Diderot Encyclopedia. It is a book which gathered all knowledge of enlightenment. And Thomas Paine or even Thomas Jefferson, uh, who are uh, key figures in the American Revolution, they worked according to the principles of enlightenment, according to principles which were found in this encyclopedia. For example, the Declaration of Independence. Uh, these ideas are reinforced, the, these, um, these declarations, they were reinforced by the ideas of John Locke uh, or even Isaac Newton which is or which are all people should be free. The late enlightenment was from 1780 to uh, 1815. Uh, uh, it resulted in the French Revolution of 1789 uh, uh, which was the culmination of the ideas of enlightenment. People were so influenced by these ideas uh, that it caused a uh, bloody revolution which uh, led to uh, the execution of Louis XIV, the King of France at that time. The causes of this revolution are uh, basically the French participation in the American Revolution and uh, the crop failure. Uh, now we move to Industrial uh, Revolution. It started from 17 uh, or it started in 1770 uh, until 1850. Industrial Revolution is a period in which the development of uh, machinery leads to uh, a major change in uh, or led to a major change in agriculture, industry, transportation or in general social conditions. It is a result of the technological uh, progress. Before the Industrial Revolution we had the Enlightenment. The Enlightenment was said it was the age of uh, science, inventions, uh, religion is put aside which uh, permitted people to go forward to develop the uh, society. So they invented new stuff, new things in order to benefit society in general. So these things had to be put in practice and this resulted in the Industrial Revolution. But it is not the only cause of course. Industrial Revolution was the key to the emergence of the uh, West and modern society. 
And now we move to some uh, things that happened during this industrial revolution in England. Transportation, for example, it was very important. Um, they invented cars, lorries, and uh, they transported in order to transport minerals and later on people. So transportation was very, very, very important at that time or at the Industrial uh, Revolution. From 1750 uh, till 1860, 1,000 miles of roads were paved. Because if you invent cars and you do not have roads, you cannot use these inventions. Therefore, they had to build or to pave roads. And the banks played a major role. Money was put in the banks which helped people to invest in uh, industry. And one of the most important things to know about industrial uh, revolution is the steam engine which played a major role uh, or even a central role. This engine was used in factories. Without the steam engine, factories won't work and there will be no industry. And also, they were used in locomotives. Locomotives is, um, or they are the, the head, uh, a lo locomotive is the head of the train. Without the head, the train won't work. The engine is situated uh, on the head. In 1720, uh, um, most iron uh, in England was important, imported, and um, in 1760, iron took off because of coal. Because uh, in 1709, uh, Abraham invented a way of smelting coal. To smelt something is to uh, melt, but a uh, at a high degree uh, of heat. So the first industry uh, of England was cotton textile and many dooms were built Bridgewater Canal of 1759 and uh, it was built only in five years. It was profitable to almost everyone in England. Now we move to the causes of industrial uh, revolution. We have capitalism. Capitalism it is referred to by historians as the laissez-faire capitalism. It means uh, there was no interference of the government uh, with uh, the economy. For example, if someone creates, uh, invents or creates something in, in industry, the government won't fix the price of that thing. It is up to the creator, the inventor, the, the one who made the thing to fix the price. Government is only there to supervise and that's all. Um, then we have imperialism. The, uh, these powerful nations uh, had colonies. For example, they had uh, English have colonies uh, or had colonies in America. These colonies supplied European countries with raw materials in order to be used in factories later. These are one uh, of all the major causes of the Industrial Revolution. And the most important thing is the Agricultural Revolution. Before the Industrial Revolution, we had Agricultural Revolution. Britain has a great climate, mild climate, mainly in the southeast uh, part of the country. Britain produced a lot of food, thanks to the crop rotation, which was, um, <clears throat> which, uh, which was discovered in uh, the Enlightenment movement by scientists. It increased food produce, uh, we also witnessed an um, increase in population, uh, thanks to safety and great economy which led also to have a great workforce and farmers moved to towns. Some farmers were replaced later on by, um, by, uh, like, by these machines, but that came after the arrival of Industrial Revolution. So these are basically the causes of uh, the Industrial Revolution in England. Now we move to the results of Industrial Revolution. We start with the new scientific approaches to agriculture. Agriculture was developed thanks to the Industrial Revolution. It involved the machinery in agriculture. Some farmers were replaced by machines. Therefore, they moved. these farmers moved to towns to join industry and to work in factories. And one of the results is the decline of feudalism or feudal system. Uh, now you have industry and land was not very important. It's not that important. It is still important, but people or the eyes of people were fixed on industry in general. Another result is the guild system. The professions uh, were taught. Not anyone could like um, works do something as a job without being uh, taught that job. 
Another result is the free market. The prices or the prices are uh, fixed by people and not by government, like I said. And uh, the crop, the crop rotation, uh, a new approach which was um, which was uh, discovered uh, in uh, the Enlightenment movement by important scientists, uh, which is called the crop rotation. It's like if uh, this year we are going to work on this land and we leave this land to rest for a year, for example, and next year we are going to work on that land. So uh, the land did not become uh, poor or dry and uh, still it produced a lot of food. Another important uh, result which which is the unions. Unions were made due to urbanization. People came to towns which were built uh, in a bad way, in a bad situation. They used to live in bad conditions which resulted also in many diseases and, uh, and these diseases of course appeared um, uh, due to the lack of hygiene and salaries were very low and when you have low salaries even uh, children started to work to help their families this is what we call child labor so with child labor we have labor unions uh, in case of exploitation of people so this is the government interfering with in order to fix the situation and we also lastly we have trade uh, unions now, this is about it for uh, the Industrial uh, Revolution. If you have any kind of questions, feel free to message me or ask in the comments below. And uh, if not, i tell you, see you on in the next uh, video concerning the British Empire. Peace.